Terms like machine learning and artificial intelligence are becoming more and more common in all walks of life. But how do they apply to medicine and anesthesiology in particular? To discuss his talk, Big Data and Machine Learning, what do these buzzwords really mean? I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Frédéric Michel. Dr. Michel, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So, what do these buzzwords really mean then? So I think uh, big data speaks for itself. Uh, it means we store today on computers or on the cloud an impressive number of data about our patients. It goes from clinical information to lab results, uh, images, or even physiologic waveforms. So we have the opportunity to analyze this data. And to do so, we need first uh, computer power. And second, we need a smart algorithm. So uh, machine learning actually are a smart algorithm. We can train. Uh, to recognize specific patterns or specific phenotypes, uh, and that would be un impossible to do as human beings, uh, given the number of data we would need to analyze, or also the relationship, the complex relationship between these data. So how might these concepts be applied in medicine? And are they being utilized anywhere already? So, um, so far, machine learning have been used mainly uh, to detect abnormalities, uh, to make a diagnosis, for instance, or to forecast uh, clinical deterioration. And uh, in practice, uh, it's mainly about uh, diagnosis or uh, detecting abnormalities. So may maybe you have seen uh, uh, this recent paper in the JAMA highlighting the difficulties that many clinicians have to uh, interpret uh, ECGs. And so that's clearly where machine learning could help. Uh, we could imagine to have a software able to analyze uh, ECGs and to help non-expert clinicians uh, to uh, avoid uh, missing any uh, abnormalities. There are other examples. For critical care doctors, for instance, uh, images are also uh, clearly a field where uh, machine learning can help a lot. Uh, echo images or CT scan images can be analyzed automatically by machine learning algorithm. And it has been used recently, for example, in uh, COVID-19 patients to clearly diagnose a disease just looking at images. How might machine learning be able to predict adverse events before they happen? So this is, this is clearly another field of machine learning. So I've said so far, there are many news to detect abnormalities. But as you said, I mean, we can also envision to use them to forecast the clinical deterioration. So uh, the science of prediction is called predictive analytics. And it's clearly both appealing from a scientific standpoint, but also uh, sometimes difficult to apply at the bedside. Uh, for instance, there are algorithms which are able to predict mortality in ICU patients. But if an algorithm tells you that the probability uh, of death is 66% uh, for a given patient, I'm not sure it's going to change the way you treat your patient. Uh, if, in contrast, the same algorithm tells you the probability is 99%, uh, I'm pretty sure clinicians already knew that. So you see, it's not always actually as uh, useful as we uh, think it could, it could be. Uh, on the other hand, if you have an algorithm able to predict uh, clinical, uh, sorry, post-operative complications, complications after a major surgery, uh, then that could be very useful, I mean, to improve the surgical pathway. Uh, for example, to offer patients a prehabilitation program or to decide uh, to use hemodynamic optimization during surgery or to uh, optimize as well a physiotherapy uh, uh, after surgery. So uh, predictive algorithm actually could help uh, to better define uh, what would be or what should be the surgical uh, journey for any given patient. So what does the future look like then? And where might predictive algorithms help the most? I think it's going to be mainly in, on the wards, uh, because today on surgical wards, uh, patients are not monitored very closely. Nurses, as you know, are doing spot check from time to time. And we know from recent studies that they miss actually a significant proportion of adverse events. So we're going to use more and more in the future uh, wearables and uh, wireless sensors uh, to monitor vital signs continuously. But we will need as well uh, smart software to identify patients who may benefit the most from these uh, technological innovations. So probably the combination of uh, new systems, new uh, wearables to monitor patients continuously and smart software able to tell us who is at risk of clinical deterioration, who is at risk of ICU transfer. I mean, the combination of these two uh, innovations is clearly a major opportunity to improve outcome in surgical patients. Dr. Misha, many thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.